What's up guys, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a super interesting video for you that after the quick and easy setup is actually a lot of fun to mess around with. What am I going to show you today? Well, I'm going to show you how to set up your own short linking service, much like Bitly or anything else like that. I currently have it set up to s.tcno.co, which is my website. If we head across to it, you'll see there's nothing here. However, if I were to add a forward slash, followed by a link, such as my account switcher Discord short link, you'll see that once we head there, it redirects us to another web page, which in this case is an invite to a Discord server. If you didn't catch that, s.tcno.co slash account switcher Discord, and that takes us here. So today I'm going to show you exactly how you do that. Basically, all you need is a web host for hosting web files, as well as an SQL database. Now, of course, I'm using a hosting company to do this. However, you're more than free to do it using XAMPP or something like that if you want to host it on your own server box. What project are we going to be using? Well, there's a few short linking services. However, I'll be using the open source URLs, which also has a GitHub page over here, both of which will be linked down below. This is probably one of the most simple to install and use ones with some nice analytics as well. All you need to do is find this page and at the very top head to install slash upgrade. Once you're here, you'll find the exact steps that you need to do to get started. What do we need to do to download it? Head across to the GitHub page, releases, and we'll be downloading one of these over here. This is 1.7.4, last released September 22nd, 2019. I'll hit the download source code dot zip and we'll have the file downloading. We'll open it up and for good measure, I'll extract it to my desktop. I'll then close out of the zip and open up our folder. So inside of here, we have all of the main files that we need for this. As you can see, we've already finished step one. Step two, we need to copy a config sample to config.php and we'll need to open it up and fill in the required settings. So I'll go ahead and do that now. User and we'll copy config sample into config.php. As such, I'll right click and edit with Notepad++. Of course, you can use an editor of your choice. Then we need to go ahead and fill in some information here. Now, of course, the information that I put in here, I will shortly be deleting after this tutorial is complete because I already have my own short linking service. So you'll need to create yourself an SQL a database and this program will do the rest. You basically just need to set up an empty database with a username and password and put the name in here as well as the link to it here. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So on my web hostings console page, I have the ability to create an SQL database. And as you can see, I have all of my information here. So the actual name of the database, etc, etc, doesn't really matter. We just need to make sure that we copy and paste it correctly. So where it says database, I'll simply copy that head into Notepad++ and I'll place it over here where it says URLs DB name paste it inside of those inverted commas, save. Then we need the username, we'll paste them there, and we need the full control password, not just the read and write, etc., etc. We need a full control. Paste that in and save it as well. And then next, my hosting console requires me to hit add before I can go ahead and get the actual server link. So I'll copy the link to the server and paste it in where it says localhost as such. I'll go ahead and save it again. And the table prefix doesn't really matter. You can leave it as is, which I'll do this time around. Then we'll scroll down to where it says site options, URLs, installation URL, or lowercase, no trailing slash at the end. If you define it at sho.rt, don't use the www.sho.rt in your browser. So basically we're setting up where it goes to. In my current configuration for s.tcno.co, I have it set up as such, which is HTTPS s.tcno.co. Though, because I'm setting up a second one, I'll simply make it slash s as such. So this is where our new short linking service will be. Then you can set the GMT offset. I'm currently in GMT negative two, South Africa. Language I'll leave as is. Unique URLs I'll leave as true. URLs private I'll leave as true as well which means the admin area will be protected with the usernames and passwords as defined below. And this is an incredibly important step if you're going to have it publicly visible to the internet. We'll scroll down some more and we'll find this over here, URLs cookie key, a random secret hash used to encrypt cookies. You don't have to remember it, make it long and complicated. Hint, 
copyfromurls.org slash cookie. If we go here, it'll give us a randomly generated string. If we refresh a couple of times, you'll see that this happens to refresh as well. So I'll go ahead and copy what's inside of these inverted commas, or you can simply copy the entire line, head back into Notepad++, and replace it over there. Save. Then we have usernames and passwords allowed to access the site, passwords either in plain text or encrypted as hashes. Read urls.org slash user password for some more information. So as you can see, once we set it up as such, it'll go ahead and encrypt a password automatically in a one-way algorithm so that it's completely safe to put it in plain text here for now. I'll have it as TCNO and I'll set the password to troubleshoot. I'll go ahead and save it once I'm done with that and I'll scroll down some more. You can set debugging to true or false. I'll leave it at false. Then the URL shortening method, 36 or 62, I have set to 62, which generates mixed case keywords as such, and not just all lowercase keywords. So it would be s.tcno.co slash this, or wherever you decide to put it. In this case, it'll be tcno.co slash s for the short links. Then at the very bottom, we have some words over here that we can go ahead and block out from the short links, meaning that these cannot be included in the short links. Of course, here are some sample words, and it's probably the only time you'll see file language on this channel. Anyways, we'll go ahead and save it, and we can minimize out of Notepad++, as well as the GitHub page giving us information on the passwords. All we need to do from here is look back at this folder and the page that we're following. So as you can see, we've finished step three. Step four, upload the unzipped files to your domain in the public HTML or www folder. And over here, we have the steps on creating a new database, which we've already done. And we just need to point our browser to the admin folder. So I'll go ahead and do that now. I'll open up FileZilla. Inside of public HTML, I've made a new folder titled S, which is what I set it up to be. And I'll go ahead and drag and drop all of the files that we just extracted and edited into this folder. Now, of course, before you do this, if you want to change it from slash admin, you can change the folder name of admin over here to be whatever you want. But for now, I'll leave it as is, drag and drop it across and wait for it to upload. Once it's done, we'll open up a browser and we'll head across to that site. HTTPS tcno.co slash s slash admin. And we'll see this page over here asking us to install URLs. So before we do this, I'm going to go ahead and open up my PHP my admin, just so you can see exactly what happens to the database. Opening it up over here, you can see that the database is completely empty with no tables found inside of it. So I'll hit install URLs. And as you can see, it's created three tables inside of our database. So I'll go to the administration page using this link. Looking at our PHP my admin, if we go ahead and refresh it, you'll see that there are now three tables and they should mostly be empty except for options, which is where we save some information on it, and URLs, which contains some sample ones. So we'll be required to log in. So remember TCNO and we use the password troubleshoot. If you'd like to reset your password, make sure to change it inside of the options. Speaking of which, let's head across to FileZilla and let's re-download that settings file so we can see how the password has encrypted. I'll drag and drop config across and I'll go ahead and open it up with Notepad++, reload it, scroll down, and as you can see, the password has changed from troubleshoot to PHP pass, followed by a bunch of random text. So it's nice and secure. As you can see, we've got some sample URLs here, short URL OZH. So what exactly does this mean? Well, if I head across to tcno.co slash s slash paste that in, hit enter, you'll see that we're redirected to ozh.org. If we go across to URLs, URLs, it takes us across to the project page of the short link. If we visit the install slash upgrade tab, you can see that we are basically done with the fresh install tutorial. Now there's a couple of cool things that you can do from here. Of course, at the very top, it says enter URL. You can go ahead and enter a URL of your choice here. So I'll enter google.com and we can give it a custom short name. So I'll just name it GGL, shorten the URL. And we've now created a short link. As you can see, here's the little quick share link, but I'll just be copying it as such, opening up a new tab and heading across to it and boop, we're on Google. Super simple and easy to do. Of course, I'll have to blur out my IP over here. But we can also check out a couple of things. So if I refresh the page, you'll see that there's one click on each of these links and there's a little analytics button next to it. Clicking that button will take us to a page where we can look at a graph. For some reason, it's smoothed weirdly. So apparently in this time frame, there were negative viewers and it went up. Although this is just a visual glitch, go by these dots instead of the actual line. And we have the option for all time. 
which is also quite useful. If we go ahead and open up another short link of mine that I've been using for quite a while, which is from my Rust tutorial Oxide video. As you can see, we have a short URL and a long URL, and this is probably my most clicked short link with over 636 clicks, as well as 17 direct referrals. So this is what the analytics page looks like when there's a couple of people who visited it, and you can see the graph is nice and populated. Comparing these two pages, they look a little bit different, but I would assume that's because these are slightly different versions of the same program, and if I updated it, it would look something similar. Either way, that's basically it for this tutorial. If you'd like to see how to set up and use the API for this, yes, there is one and you can interact with it from other web pages as well as your own computer to help speed up your workflow, then you might want to subscribe for that and look out for the video in the future. As you can see, here's the little API key that we'll be using at some stage in the future. Anyways, that's about it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found this video useful and good luck with shortening your links. I'll see you all next time. Ciao.